America's most haunted and evil house, the Sally House in the Flesh. Buried Scratch. Buried Scratch? Really? I want you to check my neck right here. I feel a burning. And the question remains, like everyone always asks, is it really a little girl or is it something posing as the spirit of a little girl? Sally, we brought you a nice new pretty doll. Sally, do you like that new doll we got you? Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully, if this evil entity exists, it'll come out and show itself on camera. Uh, that, that was phenomenal. Reach out and try and touch that. Three, two, one. <gasps> What'd it just do? It reached out and touched it. And it just went off. It did. Dave, we are in Atchison, Kansas, about to investigate what is said to be America's most haunted and evil house, the Sally House. Yes, we are. This is supposedly one of the most dark places in the world. Supposedly there was a girl that died from a botched surgery, but at some point they say that occult rituals were held in the basement and that that invited in a dark entity that attacks people that try and investigate and enter this house. And hopefully, if this evil entity exists, it'll come out and show itself on camera. But we are getting ready to pull up to this house right now to get our first look at this place that we've heard so much about. Yep, there it is. There it is. Oh, wow. A bit unassuming from the outside with all the stories, but. All right, man, you ready for this? I am ready. The Sally House in the flesh. Got it? Yep. Let's go in. Wow. We're finally here. We're finally in the Sally House. The Sally House not only has one of the most chilling stories of hauntings in the United States, but also one of the most debated histories. According to the story, the house was the home and office of a local physician. He and his family lived upstairs while he practiced on the first floor. One day, a desperate and panicked mother brought her six-year-old daughter to the doctor she was paralyzed by abdominal pain. The doctor's diagnosis? Appendicitis. He acted quickly in an attempt to save the girl's life and began cutting on her before the anesthesia could take effect. They say the girl's last moments were filled with pain and fear as she died believing a man was torturing her. This girl's name is said to be Sally. In 1993, a young couple moved into the house and it didn't take long for them to experience paranormal activity. The husband was attacked, scratched, saw objects move on their own, and even saw the apparition of what he believed was a six-year-old girl with a bow in her hair. Could this girl be Sally, who is said to have died here years ago? Some say yes. But historians and anthropologists say that this Sally never actually existed. So who is this little girl that's said to haunt the Sally house? Some people believe that it's a sinister and demonic force that lures people in with its childlike charm, but then attacks. One thing's for sure, whether this is the spirit of a six-year-old girl lost to a surgery gone wrong, or a demon, this should be a very interesting night. From what I understand, they say whatever entity pretends to be this little girl doesn't like men. If they're going to focus their anger and rage on anyone, it'll be either one of the two of us. Should we go upstairs? Yeah, that's... 
I don't know, I got a... As soon as you said that and we rounded the corner, I started to get like a pressure in my head. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. We're coming up. We're gonna be staying the night here tonight. We want to see your house. Lights would dim and brighten on their own. Appliances would turn on and off. Pictures would be found upside down and the toys in the nursery were found arranged in a circle in the middle of the floor. Just like they are now. One day during a normal Sally House tour, a four-year-old girl became missing. The girl was found in a closet with the door closed. She later said, I was playing with that little girl. That's creepy. It sounds like it doesn't take people much time in this house before they start experiencing unexplained things. If someone was on a tour and a girl was led up here into this closet, and was playing with a little girl, possibly Sally. That's weird. It, it seems like almost every room except for that back one has some sort of information or something about something that has happened in here. And to me, this, this second floor has a different energy than the first floor. When we walked into the first floor, I didn't feel as apprehensive as I do up here. Up here, it feels very strange. And the question remains, like everyone always asks, is it really a little girl or is it something posing as the spirit of a little girl? You know what I think we should do? I think we should bring in the gift that we brought for Sally. Let's go get it. Sally, we, we got a, a new toy for you. Okay, hold on. Okay. Come here. Before I even move my hands, mm -hmm. I want you to check my neck right here. Is there, I feel like- Behind I'm, your ear? Like right here. I feel a burning. You're definitely red. Like right here. Hold on, let me focus this. Like right behind your ear right here is like really red actually right here. There's something right there. It's like a really bright red mark. Really? But it's getting darker as literally as we're looking at it. Wait. I can feel it burning. We're not sure if the red marks on Dave's neck and the burning sensation he's feeling are connected. I do know that Dave's not going to mention a sensation that he's feeling unless it's severe and needs documentation. In my opinion, I can't really see any marks that could be considered paranormal, but we'll have to stay aware. With the reports of scratches appearing on men who enter this house, we can't be too careful. So I, I don't know. That's strange. I'm not saying it's paranormal, but that, that... Well, turn your neck to the other side. There's nothing there. Now turn it to the other way. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. I think this is the room where we should bring Sally's toy. I agree. Sally, we're bringing you in a toy. Sally, we brought you a nice new pretty doll. Put her in your room here with all your other toys. Let you check it out. I'm gonna step out here. 
we're gonna be here tonight and we brought this for you as a gift. And we are gonna give you a second to be with that doll and to check it out, you can try and pick it up. We'll shut the door for you. Okay. We leave one of our cameras with the doll in case anything paranormal occurs while we're unpacking and setting up equipment. And just as we made it to the living room, we captured something chilling. Oh man. What? Was that not your stomach? No. What was that? By cross-referencing our microphones, we can say with certainty this voice came from inside the house and it came from the second floor. Listen to what it sounds like on our first floor microphone. Oh man. Oh man. What? Now the one in the nursery. This is chilling but it's just the beginning of the unexplained and bizarre activity that we'll capture at the Sally House. All right, everybody, we are just trying to get started here in the Sally house. We are thinking we're going to go places up in Sally's bedroom to kind of help charge the atmosphere. Maybe it will set things even crazier in this already demonic, crazy house. So let's go ahead and make our way up there. We've got the ghost tube uh, running here, and we're gonna see if anything comes through as we set this up. Sally, we're bringing you another gift. We've plugged that plasma ball in on m quite a few investigations now, and the one thing that we know is that when that plasma ball is plugged in, the activity is heightened. Whoa. The REM pod was just going off. Sally? Whoa. Sally, do you like that new doll we got you? Whoa. plugged it in yet so Sally we would love if you would come and hang out with us later tonight listen. what does it say listen okay we'll listen What happened to me? If this is Sally, we the story as the story goes, your appendix broke. And in the process of trying to save you, you died. Died. Yeah, you did die. 
which one of these dolls here in this circle is your favorite? Can you push the one that is your favorite over? I'm going to plug this in and it'll give you some more energy. But when we do, we're going to have to tear down that toy that's in with your baby. Because it's going to... Games. What did it say? Games. Yeah, we can play some games with you if you want to. We'll be here all night to play games. You just use that and get charged up. Use that energy and then we'll play some games. Now, as soon as I plug this in, the rim pod's gonna go crazy. Shows you how much energy that's given off, guys. That beeping is coming from the rem pod. That's how much energy that thing gives off. Yeah. That was really weird, though. That was very weird. What happened to me, and I s explained the story, and then it said died. Yeah. You died. Died. And as soon as it did, the rem pod went off. What if we put this baby that we got you, Sally? What if we put it in the circle? Okay. All right, we're gonna close the door for you. Remember, when we come back up, we want you, we wanna see which one was your favorite, so make sure to knock it over. I would say that's probably one of the most intelligent sessions that we've had with the ghost tomb. Yeah, that that was a little uh was a little little too perfect, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Either that is really a little girl in there, so it's something that is really committed to the bit. Okay, you haven't done it yet. We're gonna go downstairs. Okay, well, we have a few more shots and stuff that we need to get. Yeah. So we're gonna go do that, let Sally uh, enjoy her new toy and maybe she'll s surprise us and, and we'll see which one was her favorite. So listen to the movement. Do you hear it? Yeah. That's us coming back. I don't see anything that moved as far as the toys go, but did you hear the displacement? Of, like It sounded like movement or something was moving something in the room? Yeah, man, it, it yeah, very obvious. But speaking of leaving cameras set up, I think one thing we need to do now is the sun is <laughs> it's pretty much down. And I think it's time for us to put cameras all over this house and really see what we can capture when the Sally house is completely empty. Yeah, yeah, I, I think some stuff is gonna go down that we're not expecting, so. I hope so. Let's do it. Let's wire this place up with cameras. Let's do it. We're getting ready to leave the Sally house. We set up all the equipment. We put cameras throughout the house to try and see if we could capture anything unexplained. We have a camera right down here at the bottom of the stairs pointing up and the paranormal music box is sitting on the stairs. If anything walks up the stairs or in front of that camera, it's going to alarm, it's gonna trigger. In this room, the master bedroom over here, we have the SLS camera pointed across the room at the closet and this doorway that leads into the bedroom 
Inside the nursery here where Dave's setting up the camera, you have the REM pod sitting in the center of all of the ring of toys, all of the ring of dolls. And then downstairs in the living room, we have a camera that covers not only the living room, but the kitchen as well. And there is a Mel meter as well as an EDI plus meter down there, which are in perfect view of the camera in case any of those trigger. So you ready to head out, Dave, and leave this stuff alone for an hour and see what it picks up? I am, let's do it. We're leaving. We're calling out to the spirits of the Sally House. Whoever you are, whether you're a little girl named Sally, an elderly woman, a teenage boy, or an evil malicious entity, we're here to speak to you. And we want you to show us a sign of your presence. We brought you a doll that now sits upstairs in the circle. There's like static right here to my right side. I don't know what it is. If you walk across the bottom of the stairs, we have what's called a music box. Is that you? What? I thought I heard movement behind you. We have what's called a music box. There's a circle of dolls up there in one of the rooms. If you're here, can you step into the middle of that circle? We want to know you're here. Come out and show yourself. one that is. REM pod. Was it, wait, it, it wasn't the male in the middle of the dolls? I don't think so. REM pod. It sounds like the REM pod. You like that? If you can do that, come down to the bottom of the stairs here and make this one go off. Down here. As soon as you said that, it stopped. You can also let us hear your voice.
Oh, man. Man, my right arm is going numb. I don't know what it is. My right, my right arm is numb right now. Really? Yeah. Are you standing right here to my right? Who are you? Are you right here beside me? Sally, is that you? Are you holding my whoa, hand? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? I start movement right here. Now that you're down here, can you set off that music? Let's hear it. Whoa. Did you go back upstairs? Do you want one of us to come upstairs alone? If you want one of us to come upstairs alone, set off that REM pod again, set off those lights. Touch the lights. And I'll come up there by myself. That's strange. Guess not. Somebody was making that go off up there. And we did set it up there for you, so could you do it again, please? Oh, dude, dude, come here, feel this. Where? Right here. It is so cold right here. It is like ice cold. Oh, wait, it's over here. You, you feel right that? By that? Right by the chair, yep. It is ice cold. It's like it's following you now. Here, I want to set this EDI here just for a second. 54. Were you just sitting there in that chair? If so, can you push that that thing over that I just set there on the chair? I don't know if that was weird. Mm-hmm. Hasn't changed though. No. I'm gonna put this out there. Mm -hmm. The last thing you said is if you want someone to come up there alone, make it go off. And nothing has gone off since. So maybe they don't want anybody up there at all. I'm coming up. If you don't want me to come up there, you better set off one of those lights. Or knock something over. Or slam a door. It's me. Okay. Shutting motion sensor off. Okay, so Ryan is currently upstairs by himself. I'm downstairs here by myself. We've kind of split up for a minute. Where are you? How come you suddenly stopped communicating with us? Huh? If anyone's trying to sneak up behind me, it's not gonna work. I've got a sensor back there. 
I'll hear you coming. Come on, Sally, where are you? We even brought you a gift. Dave, do you want to swap to see if uh, you being up here incites anything? We can, yeah. Okay, I'll come down and then you can come up. All right, here I am. I'm upstairs. And you were making that little red light go off earlier. Could you do it again? Come on out now. Is there one of us that you don't like? That whole room over there is full of toys. Can you shut the door to that room over there? Everybody says that you're very active and do all kinds of crazy things in here. I'd like to see you to close that door over there. That would be pretty crazy. Sally, where are you? Whoever you are, whatever you are, now that we're up here, can you show us that you're real by stepping into the middle of all of those toys right there? Right where I'm looking. Do it now, please. Or maybe you are actually just the spirit of a little girl. At this moment, our camera in the nursery picked up a creepy voice. It's faint, so we had to enhance the audio to make it more audible. See if you can hear it. Or maybe you are actually just the spirit of a little girl. The voice sounds like that of a child, but more electronic. And to us, it sounds like it's saying, we're not. Take another listen. Or maybe you are actually just the spirit of a little girl. We've been told that people have felt like they had someone follow them home, that they felt like there was an entity here that threatened their family. Who's the nasty and mean one that scratches people and pushes, almost pushes people down the stairs and threatens people? Who is that? So we're upstairs in the master bedroom now. We're going to be doing an Estes Method spirit box session, and I'm going to be listening to the spirit box through these headphones while sitting in this closet, the same closet where a little girl that was visiting, taking a tour of the Sally house, actually was found after being missing from her family for a considerable amount of time. She was found in this closet, said that she was talking to or playing with a little girl that no one else could see. This could be the spirit of Sally that everyone talks about. So I'm going to try and go in here and focus on listening to the spirit box. Dave is going to ask the questions. Whatever I hear, I'm going to say out loud, and it will be recorded for everyone to hear as it comes through the spirit box. So we'll see how this goes. All right. All right, I'm sweeping. Okay. Ryan, can you hear me? Hey, Ryan. Okay. All right. 
I didn't hear this voice because I was distracted as I adjusted the headphone cable, but almost immediately after turning on the spirit box, a voice came through and said, help me. All right, we are here. We are trying to communicate with whomever may be in this house here. We are told it is an entity named Sally. And Ryan is listening with some headphones and he can hear your responses. So I'm going to ask you questions and I want you to go and tell Ryan your answers. Do you understand? Is your name Sally? Can you see me? Are you just the spirit of a little girl? Is that accurate? Come on now. We want to talk to you. Are you a demon, like they say? Steve? We record the spirit box during these Estes sessions not only so you can hear it, but also so we can review and correct ourselves when we mishear a voice. And upon review, I don't think this man says Steve at all. I think he says, indeed. Are you a demon, like they say? What about Steve? He's not here tonight. So again, I'm asking, can you please tell me your name? How long have you been here? Now you can walk right in there and talk to Ryan. I'm asking questions I'd like you to answer to him so we can hear you. You probably don't know who we are, I'm sure. My name is Dave. And his name is Ryan. Are you trapped here? Please run. Please run. Why would I run? I have my eyes closed in here and I keep feel like there's something dark in here with me. Like, it seems like all the lights keep going, like the, I don't know, it's weird. Are you in this room here with him? It got cold in here. Are you in the room with him? Help me. What is it that you need help with? Ooh, that was creepy. It was like a little giggle. We heard that the doctor accidentally hurt a little girl named Sally in here. I feel like I'm on a boat, like I'm rocking. Yes, me too. <laughs> with you? You're with me? If you're with me, can you set that red light off? 
apparently I was rocking. Whomever is here, please come out and, and respond to Ryan in there. He's listening for you. Bitch. Did you kill somebody in here? There's a man's voice. I couldn't hear what he said. Something about lucky. Right after Dave asked the entity if it killed someone in this house, a man's voice sounds like it says, he got lucky. Did you kill somebody in here? There's a man's voice. I couldn't hear what he said. Something about lucky. Who got lucky? Who did this person or entity try and kill? Is it talking about the former owner who was repeatedly attacked inside the house? Could this unexplainable force want to kill? Look out. Whispery man's voice. We've been in here for several hours and we're gonna be here for several more hours. So we really do want you to come out and talk. Let's see how he's feeling in here. How's it going? At one point it was weird. I was like sitting here with my eyes closed and I'm like, I feel like I'm on a boat, like I'm rocking back and forth. Yeah, I also felt like that out there. And then I opened my eyes and I looked at the camera and I was literally rocking back and forth like this. Mm. This is Dave Audio SLS. Oh, wow. Holy sh What? REM pod's going off here in the living room. This is literally just turned my audio on. Hello? What is that? Are you over there by the REM pod? Something's over by the couch. Reach out and try and touch that. Three, two, one. <gasps> what did it just do? It reached out and touched it. And it just went off. It did. Holy hell, dude. We just barely got the SLS and cameras rolling in time to capture this. A few moments later, and we would have missed it. Watch as this SLS figure moves to the REM pod on command. And when it does, the proximity field is actually it broken it. and it alarms. And it just went off. We may have just captured proof that these anomalies the SLS camera can map actually hold enough energy to alarm a REM pod. And it's hard to find the words to describe it. The footage speaks for itself. What do you think? Did we just capture Sally or another entity touching our REM pod with the SLS camera? Or is this just a random coincidence? Let us know in the comments. Holy hell, dude. We're getting ready to come down. Is there somebody back in this crawl space here? Am I gonna hit my head or anything? Uh, don't move to your right. Okay. How does it work? You can just appear right in front of me here like a camera. That's all this is. Just taking your picture. Where are you? Can you tell us, can you tell us if there's an entity that likes to intimidate, scare, and 
hurt people in this house. I'm not going to hit my head, am I? You're not going to hit your head, but you are, uh, you are going to Watching run. you. Angry. Whoa. Why are you so angry? Where are you watching from? Are you back in that crawl space? Can you go upstairs right now and touch that red light that you were touching just a little bit ago to let us know that you're here? Someone touched it. Dave thinks he caught you on camera. Is it true that they used to, that there was some sort of rituals performed down here or was that just a legend, a story? Been told many times over. So far, nothing on the SLS. Disagree. Disagree. Well, let me rephrase. So far, nothing on my camera down here. <laughs> I did get you upstairs, didn't I? That's a weird response to that. It is. Buried. Scratch. Buried. Scratch? Really? It just said buried. Scratch. Are you buried back under that part of the house? that nobody can get to? Man, my, my head is like killing me all of a sudden. You think it's an en like an energy thing? I don't know. Are you making my head hurt? Whoa, something just mapped there. Huh. Are you trying to go back in that cubby hole? Are you trying to go in there? I'm going. I'm going. Dude. You asked if it's trying to go in there and you and it said I'm going. I know. Did it disappear? It just disappeared. Wow. Uh, that, that was phenomenal. That's the second time today that it has intelligently answered us through the ghost tube. Yes. The other one was when I told Sally, as the story goes, how she died. And then it said died. Yes. You died. Died. There hasn't been, there was nothing before, and there has been nothing since on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've been sweeping this whole room so much. Yeah. <laughs> For like 20 minutes. With our time here in the Sally House winding down, we decided to make one last attempt at communication here in the basement. Prior to a couple owning this house in the 90s, the a woman lived here and apparently did occult rituals in the basement and they said that this was the spot where she would do her rituals. Using the mini portal, we spent 35 more minutes trying to get confirmation of any evil or demonic entities in this house. Is there someone that haunts this house that people are afraid of, that likes to follow people home, that likes to scratch people and push people? But unfortunately, no intelligent responses came through during this whole session. But just like that, our time here in the Sally House 
is over, and we have to pack up our gear and hit the road. But as we're going, we know that it's important to leave one thing behind. The doll that we brought for Sally will stay here for as long as time will allow. And if you ever find yourself on a tour or an investigation here, you just might see her right where we left her, in her stroller, in the nursery. Be sure to tell her and Sally that PQ says hi. When you walk in this house, you're bombarded with pain, agony, depression, defeat. Were you praying on Jacob? <laughs> Stephanie? Really? Ow! What the f was that? I don't see anything really. Okay, good. I mean, that's a good wait, thing. Wait, 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 wait. What's this? That was not there when he lifted his shirt. No, that was not. So it's like forming as we're talking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel it starting to burn now. A friend of mine named Jeanette, she called me and said, I have somebody here um, that I think you need to talk to. So this lady named Stephanie got on the phone who I've never met before, and she wanted to know if we could help her because she was having um, a tremendous amount of activity in her home, and she was terrified. Tell me a little bit about what you've been experiencing inside the house. Okay, you see people, things happen, things, dishes move, they move things around here. You always, you hear them, they make you, you, they make you, inside of your head, they make you know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, so, the, the, the creature man has left with my ex-boyfriend. The, the creature man, for some reason, attached himself to him. He went crazy. My brother became suicidal in here just last night. He's only been here two months. Happy kid. He's overwhelmed with depression. There's a lot of sadness in here. Everybody's sad, there's a lot of depression in here. What exactly do you think is causing the activity in here? Do you have any idea? Have you seen anything that leads you to believe what might be happening? I've seen a lot of things, so it's kind of, it's hard to distinguish sometimes what's real and what's not because they, they make you see things, they make you hear things, they tell you things inside of your head where you're talking to yourself and you, you'll find yourself, you'll answer out loud to their questions. When exactly did you notice that stuff started the to happen? The first week, I moved in here April the, the 1st of 2020. The first week I was here, I seen the man in the basement with the boots. The man in the basement, is a, he has a long beard. And all I, he was just all black with these, all I noticed was these boots, super huge boots, like old time boots. He caught me out of my peripheral vision and I seen him and he was just gone. Um, the lady, the lady that's in here, she will be in this room. The kitchen is her area. If, if she don't like who's in the kitchen, pans are moving, plates are moving, things break. So you've had things actually fly around? Absolutely. The, the cast iron pan in the drain tray fell off, nicked the wall, went straight down. In the kitchen over there? In the kitchen. And have you ever felt like when stuff flies around that it's actually flying at you? Yes. Like something actually is throwing it at you? Mm -hmm. So you think whoever is here might be angry with you? The fact that you're living here? I think they're angry with anybody who's here. Nobody's been able to live here longer than a year without something tragic or drastic happening, like going insane and uh, the man that used to live here beat his, beat his woman almost to death.
when I made the turn here by the steps, it didn't feel bad, it didn't feel good, it just felt like a shift in the atmosphere, like pressure, I guess you'd say. And I had my K2 with me, and the K2 uh, indicated high readings. I had my cell phone out, and I was recording the K2, and then going back over review of the phone, it had um, an EVP, a breathy whisper that says, sounds like you're insane. There was a little boy at the top of the steps laying upside down and he had a book above his head and he was reading. And it almost sounds like after the EVP, the little boy says the same thing. Sounds like he says the word insane. When you walk in this house, there's so much pressure. It's just like, it's you're bombarded with pain, agony, depression, defeat. It's just, it's overwhelming. Like, my brother, like for some reason, like yesterday, I, when he did, when he was doing a suicide bit, he was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why. Did they try to, you know, put it on onto me? Because I'm the one that they mess with the most. I'm the one who sees the most in here. Everybody hears things. But in here, they don't... You can go from being the happiest person in the world to like, I can't do this no more. And when you don't, can't figure out why you can't do it no more. It's just telling you, you're not happy and maybe you should end it. When did you decide that enough was enough and that you were going to leave? Um, when Demetrius left, when I saw the creature man crawling up the stairs. He took my breath away. I, I just grabbed my ex-boyfriend Demetrius and I couldn't I couldn't get no words out. I just grabbed him. I woke him up out of his sleep. He seen him, I seen him. He looked back at us, the guy on the steps, and just was gone. Describe him to me. How was he crawling? He looked like a wet like a wet log is what he looked like. And his all I can remember is he's like it looked like branches, just like this. And he was crawling up the steps. And when he got to the top steps, his hands was out like this, and he was just down like this. That doesn't sound like it is anything human. I mean, it doesn't sound, it didn't look I, it, human. It wasn't, no, it, 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 no, it wasn't human. And, and it's, it's so crazy because he was black, but you could see the eyes, the white of the eyes. Stephanie herself, I could tell something was extremely bothering her. Um, to the point where I kind of felt sad for her because, you know, somebody that, that lives in a house, pays rent, and she can't, she doesn't stay here. I mean, that, that's sad to feel like a prisoner in your own home. So I told her, I said, we'll do our best to try to help you. You talked about not just being sad and depressive, but also you feel like it makes you angry. All the time. It makes people angry. All the time. And that people have... Fights. Yeah. There's constant fights. There's constant chaos. And now we can't have a family gathering without somebody losing their temper and people that wouldn't normally be like that. Right? No, not at all, not at all. Where do you feel the most unsafe? In the basement. In the basement? In the basement, in, in the room right here, the pool, where this pool table thing is at. What about the basement makes you feel so uneasy? I, I don't, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. For the first week I moved in here, I seen the manager dryer. That's really the last time I've ever spent in the basement. Yeah. And there's a portion of the basement that has a dirt floor that's not concreted over. And back there, there's a part. Uh, when you walked us down there before we pulled our equipment out, you you can clearly see someone was drawing on the walls down there. And it's very, it's almost devilish drawings on the walls down there. Do you think it's possible that maybe someone was performing some sort of rituals down there or something or summon it's something? Possible. It's possible. Uh, it's possible. I don't know. I've. I didn't even see that other drawing on the wall until you pointed that out. That's how I don't go down there. I seen the one drawing my brother showed me that was on the side of the wall. He's like, did you see this? And when I seen it, I was like, what is that? I've never seen, it's crazy because I've never seen the other drawing that's that you pointed out to me. I've never seen it. The smells that you'll smell in this house smells like rotten eggs. Sometimes like you'll get a really strong odor of like like sulfur. something's rotten, yeah. Like, like something's sulfur. rotting. Yeah. And, and then sometimes, like in two, three in the morning, you'll smell food cooking. Sometimes you'll smell chemicals. Like it's a, it's a weird kind of chemical. You've talked to the neighbors. Dexter, yeah, Dexter next door. Yeah. Dexter told you that he he's known of multiple people that have died in the house. Mm -hmm. 
How many people did he say actually? Three. Three died? Mm -hmm. Mary and her husband Donald definitely died in this house. And do you know who the third would have been? No, no. no. But it also was an old mining house. Absolutely. And so who knows how many people have passed through here. Like I said, the mine shaft is right here. There was a mine collapse in 1941, I believe it was. The coal, they used to run shoots down here all the time. Yeah. Ultimately, I know you said you're, you're going to be leaving here within the next couple of weeks, no matter what. Yes. But we want to try and bring you a little bit of closure, help you find out what's causing the activity, and hopefully get it to go away. Of course, with anything like this, sometimes it's complicated. We can't promise that we're going to be able to get it all to go away, but we want to at least help lessen your load for the amount of time that you have left to be here. That's greatly appreciated. Okay, so we're here at a private residence in Etnaville, Ohio, just outside of Martin's Ferry. And it's myself, Ryan, and we've got Pam right over here. Jason, unfortunately, can't make it tonight. Uh, he has to work, and Steve is on his way up after he closes the museum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around and, and try and get a baseline for EMF within the house because there's a lot, a lot of high emotions and stuff that are going on in this house, and we just wanna see if maybe high EMF could be causing that to start with before we go any yeah. further into this. Yeah, and like Pam stated in her interview when we talked to her, like 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 you said, you know, when you came in here, you had EMF detector, you had a K2 meter on the stairs, you had a K, K2 meter up in the bedroom, and you did get some high EMF in some of the bedrooms. Yes, I did. So we wanna check that and make sure that it's not the electrical magnetic frequencies messing with their brain waves, causing them to hallucinate. So, which is a, an occurrence that does happen. It ta it happens quite it a bit. So, it can get to it can get to the point where it'll drive you insane. Yep. Um, but just just to start out, we're sitting here at a zero point zero. Yep. Good and deal. You guys want to start in the basement? Yeah. Let's work in. Let's start in the basement and then work our way up. Okay. Now, when I came down here the first time I was here to meet her initially, I got no EMF readings around the hot water tank. Okay. Nothing down here. Nothing. Mm -mm. I'm gonna walk over to the panel box here and see what kind of a reading this gives. Now that I did not go near. 8.177. Seven. And that's outside the box, but that's the closest to the source where the electricity enters the house. 18. 18, there you go. 2.0, okay. Yeah, so back up. But once you're standing right there, what do you get? It's readjusting to a zero. To a zero out here, okay. So, which is what it should be. Which that, you know, that makes sense. So we'll walk back in here, and when we came down earlier, we noticed that there's an old filled in well, um, but you never know that could play into some of this. Yeah, and that's right down here on the floor underneath the furnace. And the other thing that bothers her is that back there behind Dave. The painting, yeah. She is really bothered by, and actually when she, or after I sat down and interviewed Stephanie, we came back down here again without any cameras just to talk privately and she actually said that the eyes of that painting remind her of the eyes of what, um, of that figure that was crawling up the stairs at her. Well, strangely enough, when I came over here, it bumped up to a point three, and then it evened back out. Oh, that's weird. So you got an EMF spike right there by that painting. Right by its face. There, I think. That was strange. But then over here behind Pam, there's another one. Nothing. Well, I mean, that's a pretty pretty flat reading for the basement other yeah. than the panel box where it should have been. Right. So, you want to move on up? Yep, let's head upstairs and see what we can get up there. Watch your step here. So this would be right around where that panel box is down there. Did and you hear that? we're getting nothing. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? In the basement. It was in the basement? Mm -hmm. That's weird. 
Now, what's really strange, and Stephanie told us this after the fact, is she said that all this stuff that's sitting down here at the bottom of the stairs belongs to the people that lived here before her, which is the gentleman that ended up beating his girlfriend severely, putting her in the hospital. And then what we didn't know is he ended up committing suicide. And all of this stuff at the bottom of the stairs still belongs to them and is still here in the house. So their energy could still be here. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's the guy who she picks up on in here. So again, this is where a few days ago, uh, Pam did an initial sweep through the house and she had high readings here on the steps. Right now, there's nothing. So that's a good indicator that Pam was having something happen when she was here. I'm at a 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 5.5, 12. Really? So there's got to be something running through this wall. 20. 20. Wow. 22. So there's, there's definitely something in this wall here that's... They were in the bedroom when they saw the man crawling up and high EMF like that, they believe can sometimes feed spirits as well. Right. Is that higher than the breaker box downstairs? Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. You want to start in the front bedroom? Let's start, yeah, this is her bedroom. Nothing off any of this. Pretty average. I felt like there was something crawling on my face there. Really? something touching my face. It just felt like something right here under my chin. That's very strange. Okay, so this is Jacob's bedroom. Where, you know, she was telling us over the last couple of days, he had some very emotional things happen in this room. Don't yeah. want to dive too much into it, but um, from what I understood, very out of character for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she said he was never unhappy until he moved to this house. She said he was never like that, never unhappy, always a happy-go-lucky person until he moved here. All right. Nothing. I mean, it's like a zero, zero.
to me. I was setting up the SLS camera for us to take it upstairs and do a sweep with it, and we heard it means a loud, loud bang upstairs. Was it me? It's almost right above here. Let's go, Steve. Let's go. Oh, come on, right. Well, remember to get a battery for this. Yes. Who's up here making noise? Sounds like it was either in this room or the back room. From downstairs. Nothing here on the floor that looks out of place. Stephanie told me that you can't stand me. So if that's true, Close that door right there to the closet. Man. Close it. I got a pain right in my, my stomach. You all right? Yeah, that hurt. It's like right up, right. Ow. It's like, what the heck? Man. Sharp pain right down through my lower abdomen area. That's not good. You can, I don't think so. You can walk. You guys all right up there? I think so. Yeah. I got your battery, Steve. Okay. He's causing all the activity up here, making everyone feel uncomfortable. Is this your house? You say someone likes to crawl up the steps? Yeah. I don't know what that's about. What's that? She calls it the creature man. Is that what she refers to, the creature man? She calls it the creature man. I panned over here towards the... That was like full on coming at me like... Full screen, like the full screen was, was mapping as a stick figure. That's strange. Yeah. Right when we said creature man? Right when you started talking about the creature man. You say someone likes to crawl up the steps? Yeah. I don't know what that's about. What's that? She calls it the creature man. Is that what she refers to, the creature man? She calls it the creature man. And she said it was John had long hands and fingers. I've got pins and nails right now. And it's hot in this house. Like, I feel chills right now. Yeah. In this doorway. Come on, make yourself known. Who is or what is the creature man? Who crawls up these steps? Is it different when you have people that want you to do it rather than people who are afraid of you? bumping the air conditioners off. There's nothing running in this house. Mm -mm. Let me get you know, by these stairs, Steve. Yeah. Let's see if I can point this down the stairs. All right, we're standing at the top now. <clears throat> About three months ago, Stephanie woke up and saw a, a dark, dark figure with long hands and fingers with beady red and white eyes crawling up the stairs at her. Can you show yourself on these stairs for us? How about I lay in bed and recreate her laying in bed? Yeah, you can do that. Can you show yourself to me like you did Stephanie coming up the stairs? Whoa. You got something? 
something mapped right down here on the stairs. Come on, get up here! Well, that was weird. I got chills because I did not move the camera at all, and that figure just popped up there. Can you show yourself to me like you did Stephanie coming up the stairs? Whoa. I thought I saw you right there on the stairs. Can you walk up towards us? So we can see you? Come and show yourself to Pam like you did Stephanie. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. That was you guys? on the stairs right in front of me. So I heard out of my left ear. That was f creepy. That wasn't you guys? No. No, it was like a growl. Yes, yeah. I heard that. That wasn't you? No, no, it was on the stairs right in front of me. Come on, show yourself a ham like you did Stephanie. Come on, show yourself a ham like you did Stephanie. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Ooh, that gave me chills. Got, yeah, pins and needles do. That was weird. How much more can you do? I want to ask you or whoever it was just a little bit ago. Something caused very sharp pains in my lower, my lower abdomen area. Who did that? Yeah, I told Dave about it. I was walking back to go to the back bedroom area. It, was, it felt like a knife. Didn't she say that what her brother did yesterday was a knife? Oh yeah. My brother, like for some reason, like yesterday, I, when he did, when he was doing a suicide bit, he was like, "I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why." Was that you that we heard growl a couple minutes ago? Whoa. What you got? On the stairs. I just disappeared. Are you coming up towards us? Do you mean to do us harm? Do you mean to do Stephanie harm? Do you mean to do Jacob harm? With everything she's told us, it sounds like you mean to attack them. You're trying to oppress them, you're trying to make them bitter and angry until either you hurt them or they hurt themselves. It can't happen anymore. Let me sweep back here into Jacob's room. What was that? What the hell was that? What was that? What the hell was that? What was that? What the hell was that? It sounded pretty eerie, didn't it? It did. Way colder in this room. It is a little bit cooler, isn't it? Mm hmm Are you in here? Whoa, what was, what was that? Something just moved right there. Just walk around in a circle. Just... Can you step over that a little bit? Something on that mattress just moved. Yeah, that would, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Something on this mattress, on this air mattress just moved in here. I'm gonna walk down. Steve's camera would have had to have picked up that oh, sound. Oh, it was loud. Like there was, there was echo to it. Yeah. And the huh? thing is, though, it's a lot of it's flat. 
it's got a lot of the air out of it, so it's not gonna. Yeah, and it's been flat for a while. Is somebody following me down the hall? You have a problem with Pam? It felt like somebody, like, was, as I was walking down, like somebody was stepping behind me. And then we heard that noise. If you don't want us in this house, close the door to that bedroom. And we'll leave. Um. I've got cold chills. I did. I don't want this stuff oh. right now. So bad. Somebody on the steps? Are you watching it us? Disappeared. Dave. Yeah. It disappeared. <laughs> but right before you said you had cold chills, there was something, it looked like it was like climbing the wall beside you and it was reaching down and touching your shoulder. <laughs> and then it disappeared and you said, I have cold chills. I do, man. All Literally. over. Literally. Your legs? All over. <laughs> that was weird. What was going on with this bed? Well, when you guys were walking, when you guys were down there, I was standing right here. And yeah, there's a squeaky floorboard right here. And I was in the doorway. He was in the doorway. And there is a squeaky floorboard right here, but that's not at all what I what we heard. It sounded like something moved on the mattress here closer to the wall. It sounded like something was pulled across it or moved. You hear it echo too. Whoa, what was that? What was that? Something just moved right there. Just walk around in the circle. He said he does not sleep in the bed, he sleeps in the chair. That was weird, yeah. It was it was bizarre. He said it creeped him out over here. He said that that's why he's always in the chair. <clears throat> Definitely some strange stuff. Yeah. That growl was what got me because that that was not that my style. Came from like here on the stairs. That growl it was like yeah, that was right here on the stairs in front of me. Very loud. Come on, show yourself and Pam like you did Stephanie. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. I mean, what did it sound like? It was, it was yeah. deep. It was like. Huh. I heard it over in the doorway. I heard it laying on the bed. I wonder why I didn't hear it. Who knows? Maybe it is afraid of me for some reason. <laughs> Did one? Did what? <clears throat> I just heard somebody call me an idiot. Well, that's where I got insane. Okay. Was it a high pitched voice or what was it? No, it was just went, idiot. I just heard somebody call me an idiot. I have to listen back to that audio. Very bizarre. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, Two and cameras right here, so I picked Ooh. it up. Something mapped in front of you, Dave, and then disappeared really quickly. Well, here. Pam, could you hold that for a sec? Absolutely. There's a handle on the side there. Just in case something happens. Okay, so earlier Stephanie said that you were telling her to her face that you didn't like me and that you were standing behind me saying that you didn't like me. And then I heard somebody call me an idiot. Was that you? Dave? Yes. I want to say this just for the record. So then I've been thinking about it for the past about five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Whatever that doesn't like Dave, I really feel, I really feel him doing a solo at some point tonight in here. Yeah. Whatever it is that doesn't like Dave might come out when it's only him. Yeah, it could be. You okay? I'm smelling like a, Foul odor. Like, I got your chills. I like, like that sulfur smell that you get. The smells that you'll smell in this house smells like rotten eggs. Sometimes, like you'll get a really strong odor of like, like something's sulfur. rotten. Yeah, like, like something's sulfur. rotting. Yeah. She, she, she literally told me, Dave, you weren't even in the room, but because when we filmed that interview, for 95% of it, it was just Stephanie and I. 
Um, I was rolling on the cameras, they were on tripods. Dave was walking around the house taking pictures. He didn't hear that. She told me that on the interview, that she gets that a lot in here. She, she gets, told me on the phone, too. She gets sulfur smells. She gets foul smells in here. That's not good. Really? Yeah. That's not good at all. All right, so I am now down in the basement by myself. The guys are upstairs getting ready to turn their cameras on. They're getting set, getting ready. We're going to try an experiment here. We always do the Estes method, which is where I'm going to listen to the spirit box through a set of headphones and then call out the answers to questions that are asked around me. But this time I'm going to be by myself down here in the basement while the guys are upstairs on the floor above asking the questions. So what I'll do when I hear a response, I'll yell it out to them so that they can hear me upstairs, hopefully hearing the answers to the questions that are being asked. And then at that point, um, I'm going to actually be recording the spirit box as it's coming into my headphones so that you all at home can hear what I'm hearing in the moment. So if I hear a voice and I call it out, you know I'm not lying. You know I heard it because it's going to be captured on the recorder for you all to hear. But hopefully we're going to be able to use this as a way to come in contact with some of the negative energies that I believe originate in this basement. So here they come. We're coming down to start recording. They're going to sync up the cameras for upstairs. And then we're going to get going. All right, here we go. Ready? Sync up all the cameras. And got it. That camera got it. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, we'll leave you to it there, Mr. Ryan. Yes. Okay. So they're headed back upstairs now that the cameras are synced up. And we are going to try this experiment here. Once the lights go off, I'm gonna be alone in the basement. I have the REM pod here behind me. Of course, most of the time I'm gonna have my eyes closed so even I won't know when that goes off. Ready? Okay. Good. All right, I'm getting ready to start sweeping. And I'm sweeping. Which entity is in the house? Go down and talk to Ryan. Rim pod. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Ryan. Did you hear that? What'd did you, you hear? hear that? No, what'd you hear? Yes. It like a. No, it was like a little female, like a little little kid whining. She said she wanted to talk to you, Pam. Go for it. Ask her questions. Tell her to answer Ryan. So you didn't hear that? No. Closer. Closer. Are you wanting to talk to Pam? Pam's right over here. Leave! Did He's he, downstairs. Did he say please or leave? Leave. Why do you want us to leave? Steve! My name's Steve. Is there another Steve here? Get in the ring. Get in the ring or something like that? What do you want with Steve? The ring where the well is. Yes. Do you know Steve? Can Steve help you? What was that? I'm hiding. I'm hiding. Where are you hiding at? Is this the little girl? It yes. Are you the entity that screws with Stephanie? She says you speak to her. I've got like a splitting headache behind my eyes ever since I put my chair here. 
My head is throbbing. Can I, can I do something? Can I sit on the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want. Tell me something. What's your chance? Okay, I feel better now. I don't know what that was. That was a lot. We won't hurt you. You should know that by now. To your right. I got it. Cold chills, freezing cold on my right side right before he said that. Really? If you guys can hear me, I just wanted to make a note and say I am not alone down here. If you're down there with Ryan. Yes. Behind you. Tell him your name now. Who's in danger? standing right here beside me by this door door what did he just say the door <laughs> that's crazy knock on the door if you want me out of this house right now knock on the door and I'll leave something touch my right arm. Is there one person in this house controlling all the other spirits? Please, again. <whistles> Temperature sensor. Do something about it. Actually, last time I heard, Dave said he kind of liked this place. He might be the next tenant moving in. Sure. Oh, we might all just move in. Dave. What's your name? Please. Please. Why? What did Dave do? Idiot. <laughs> I told you I heard it. Yeah. That was weird. That's what Dave heard. That's what Dave heard on the stairs. Right. Who knows? Maybe it is afraid of me for some reason. <laughs> did what? Did what? I just heard somebody call me an idiot. Are you appearing? To Stephanie as a little girl. My, that headache's coming back again. Oh yeah. 
It's like, oh, I just got pins and needles me behind me. Me too. All over me. You all right? You all right? Huh? What did he just say? You all right? Come on, all right. Dave. Dave. I gotta get out of this circle. We're talking to the to <laughs> that's been uh, terrorizing the people in this in this household. It's making my head throb. We're gonna stay in here for the for the foreseeable future. It's a nice house. Danger! Are you the devil? It sounded like a REM pod going off in the spirit box. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, what is your name? Who is that? Are you a demon? Answer him now. Yes. Yeah. I, just, I feel like something's draining me. You're torturing the people that live in this house. <laughs> Coach man. You get enjoyment out of that? Is that what you like? Were you praying on Jacob? <laughs> Stephanie? Really? Ow. The f was that? Something just. Ah, poke me right between the shoulder blades. Ow, fuck. Run. Run. What are you doing to Ryan? Damn, that hurt. Did you just poke me? Sounds like what happened to me. Bam, I'm gonna squeeze right by here, just to the top of the steps. Yeah, yes, maybe. Oh man, that gave me chills all the way up my back. That was strong. Come on up these steps now. Get up. Get up. Come on. Ugh. Guys, I gotta shut that off. Where's that flashlight? I don't know what I really want. I don't see anything really. Okay. Good. Wait, that's a good. Wait, 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 wait. What? What's this? That literally was not there when he lifted up the shit. No, it was not. <laughs> Did you... There's something there. It's like as we're talking it's, about it. It's showing up. Really. Yeah, and it, says, it wasn't it's, it's, there. I'm not going to touch it, but it's in this area here. Oh, center. Uh, yeah, as you pulled your shirt up, it wasn't there. That was not there when he lifted his shirt no. up. No, it was not. So it's like forming as we're talking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. It looks like it's getting darker too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's starting to burn now. Here, look. I can feel it. Getting the long one like right about here. Two, three, four. Yeah, I can feel it starting to burn now. Yeah, get somewhere, man. Hmm. But which is interesting because where that happened and where I thought like ask Dave about Bob would be over was yeah. right here, same height. You all right? Yeah, that hurt. It's like right up, right. Ow. After receiving some intelligent responses through the spirit box, even when I was a full floor below. Are you a demon? Answer him now. Yes. Yeah. 
combined with the sharp pain and mysterious marks that had appeared on my back. Ow, the f was that? It looks like it's getting darker too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's starting to burn now. Here, look. I can feel it. We believe this house was infested with a very dark entity. It spoke to us. What, was what the hell was that? It growled at us. Come and show yourself a hand like you did Stephanie. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. It even tried to attack us. Oh man, that gave me chills all the way up my back. That was strong. Come on up these steps now. After all these experiences and all of the evidence that we captured, we knew this family had definitely been experiencing a traumatic haunting. Most startling of all, this entity seemed to be very intelligent. It listened to us and responded. Who knows, maybe it is afraid of me for some reason. I, I just heard somebody call me an idiot. So when all the paranormal activity inside the home stopped, we could only think of one explanation. Could it be that this dark spirit had figured out that it wasn't going to be able to scare us out of the house? Maybe it figured out that we'd be more likely to leave if we experienced no paranormal activity at all. So it just fell silent. And we tried our hardest to get more evidence. It does seem like the energy started to subside in here since over the past little bit of time. Yeah, it does. For nearly three hours, we investigated. You cannot go on terrorizing the members of the household here, nor any new ones coming in. Even leaving Dave alone in the house to draw out whatever spirit didn't like him. I am here by myself in the house. Come and speak with me. Let's have a conversation. Even though the communication had stopped, we still had a promise to keep. A promise to try and rid this house of whatever dark energies had ruined these people's lives. We are unifyingly addressing the evil, malevolent, or potentially demonic forces in this house who are oppressing the household or individuals who um, stay in the house. I'm stating right now, you are bound through scripture, you are bound by the blood of Jesus Christ to leave this dwelling and to never return. The people living in this house do not want you here. You are not welcome here. We, as a, as a group of individuals, do not want you here because we know you are causing turmoil, or you are causing mental physical and spiritual unrest for the people in this house, in this household. So together, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we rebuke you to leave this dwelling and to never return. So I'm praying from the top of this house, all four corners of every room, every floor, all the way into the basement, the soil itself. Pray. that the love and grace of God through the Holy Spirit, through Christ, bless this house, bless the land that it sits on, bless any individual that enters this house. May they see this house and view this house as a, a, a haven, a refuge from evil, from malevolent entities, from demonic forces. You Again, you are unwelcome here. And we command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ right here and right now. Leave and return from where you came from. I'm feeling cold air. Mm. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Oh, Amen. I feel it now too. Yeah, it's coming from my left. That's, that was strange. It clearly states in the Bible, if two or more are gathered in my name, there you will find me. That he will hear your voice, hear your plea. With good intentions, 
what we have here through a connection to God through the Holy Spirit we have here again I state any evil malevolent or demonic forces or all of the above if you are in this house You are rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ. You are bound by his blood. We command you to leave and never come back. Go forth from which you came from and never return. You have no authority over us. You have no right to attach to us, follow us home, nor our family, nor any of our belongings. We rebuke you. Leave. Hey Josh, we wanted to give you a call here to just kind of talk about what what happened. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. How dangerous is this house? It's a playground. I know this case affected us for weeks after work. But there was other people that came in and helped, and the client herself, since we did that investigation they have said that they don't want to be shown on camera. Like she said, we could be putting all three, all of us in danger. Oh, <laughs> Something just moved in front of that motion sensor. We could be putting her in danger. We're paranormal investigators. We have to show people the truth. We caught evidence. And I think it's important for people to see what happened in that house that night. Yeah, I would say that's probably the top three haunted locations we've ever been in. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. Dave, Pam, we are back in the house. One of our most intense cases that we have investigated probably ever since we started investigating. Are you a demon? Answer him now. Yes. We found out on our first investigation that there was something evil tormenting her in this house. He looked like a wet, like a wet log is what he looked like. And he, all I can remember is he's like, it looks like branches just like this. And he was crawling up the steps. And when he got to the top steps, his hands was out like this. He was just down like this. Something that drove her friends and her family to violence and anger. It's you're bombarded with pain, agony, depression, defeat. Secluded her in this house and made her feel insane. You can go from being the happiest person in the world to like, I can't do this no more. We don't, can't figure out why you can't do it no more. It's just telling you, you're not happy and maybe you should end it. We came in and we investigated and Steve did a blessing. Any evil, malevolent or demonic forces or all of the above, if you are in this house, you are rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ. You are bound by his blood. We command you to leave and never come back. Go forth from which you came from and never return. But whatever was here is back and it's back stronger. And we literally just got here. We haven't walked through the house yet. And we're gonna walk through and we're gonna go over what we captured on the first investigation. Wait until you get on these stairs, you can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we had a lot of activity right on the stairwell last time. Yes. Can you walk up towards us so we can see you? Come and show yourself to Pam like you did. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. That, that was you guys? on the stairs right in front of me. That wasn't you guys? No. No, it was like a growl. Yes, yeah. I heard that. That wasn't you? No, no, it was on the stairs right in front of me. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a h
want to show yourself in the pan like you did What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Was that you that we heard growl a couple minutes ago? Whoa. What you got? On the stairs. I just disappeared. Did one? Did what? I just heard somebody call me an idiot. This stairwell was charged with paranormal activity, and that makes sense. It's also where the client saw the inhuman apparition crawling toward her. He took my breath away. I, I just grabbed my ex-boyfriend Demetrius, and I couldn't, I couldn't get no words out. I just grabbed him. I woke him up out of a sleep. He's seen him. I seen him. He looked back at us, the guy on the steps, and just was gone. But the whole second floor was active. In the bedroom at the end of the hall behind me, a figure showed up on the SLS camera, right beside Dave. And what happened when this figure appeared to touch him shocked me. I've got cold chills. I did. I don't want to touch oh. right So bad. <laughs> but we believe the spirits and entities enter the house through the basement, where a well is covered over, and the most energy emanates. This is definitely a there's a there's a weak, strange vibe down here. Yeah, that cabinet is gone because that whole cabinet fell over. But right in here was where I was sitting when I, when I was performing the SD session, and I remember watching back on that footage. It freaked me out. Can I, can I say something? Yeah. Somebody had made a comment, and I, I had saw it, and I didn't say anything. He said that you settled into the chair almost with a smile on your face. Uh huh. That's what I got freaked. goosebumps just thinking about it just now. But you're just okay. Come at me. <laughs> that's what that's what freaked me out. Yeah. Was when I saw myself and how comfortable I was, even though I was in the basement, which the well being right here, which they believe might have been the apex of the activity and the negative energy, sitting right beside of it by myself in a chair. I looked as comfortable as can be, like I was at home and happy to be here. And that freaked me out watching that footage back as I was putting that episode together, that video together. Yeah, it, it was quite strange. And uh, the voices that kept saying your name, it kept saying Dave. Right. It kept telling you to leave. Danger. danger. Who's in danger? Dave. Get out. And what has been one of the most reoccurring questions has asked you? Yes, yeah, since she called me to have us come back, most reoccurring question she's asked, is Dave coming back? Is Dave coming back? Is Dave coming back? Yeah. Every I, time I talk to her on the phone, she says, Dave's coming back, right? Yeah, and I hadn't told anybody this, but, I, well, I told you this, but when he told me that the other day, I was trying to go to bed, and I kept having these, not nightmares, but these, like, visions of, of her asking that, but me coming into the house, and then when she got here, she changed. I don't know. And it really, it really freaked me out and kept me from, from going to sleep that night. Um, when you say she changed, how do, what do you mean? Just, I mean, you know how she, she's very talkative and, uh, but it was just like quiet, just nothing. Ow, the f was that? Something just, ah, poked me right between the shoulder blades. Run. That's a good wait, 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 wait. What's this? That literally was not there when he lifted up the shirt. No, it was not. <laughs> There's something there. It's like, as we're talking it's, about it. It's showing up. It looks like it's getting darker too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's starting to burn now. Here, look. I can feel it. Places take on different feelings when it's during the day and when it's at night. Mm -hmm. But this feels like, like right now, as the day, you know, as the sun's out, it almost seems like it's the same as what it was when we were here at night the last time. Right. So if it's almost like, if it's, if we're feeling this way when the sun's out, what's it going to feel like when the sun goes down? Are you getting that vibe though? Oh yeah. There's, there's something different about this house, I think. When we did that blessing, whatever was here just went quiet. 
And when she let her guard down, it came back stronger than ever. And I think in order to bring her some sort of peace and have a safe place for her to live, or even just to free her of this house so she can leave, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And in order to do that work, we, I don't think we can do it on our own. No. So we called in reinforcements. Tonight we're gonna to be investigating with Living Dead Paranormal, the Foreman Brothers of Paranormal Nightmare TV. And hopefully together we can conquer whatever this evil devilish spirit is inside this house. Okay, we are rolling. Good there. Okay. Good there. Okay. Let's get into when you first moved in here and be kind of specific. Like I moved in here the summer of 19, whatever. April of 2020 is when I moved in here. The first time I seen the guy in the basement with the boots, I was doing laundry. I looked over by the hot water tank. He was standing there. He had boots on big, big boots. That's what I noticed first in a long beard. Things just started happening after that. The creature man started making himself more known. He would start, come to my door, like the threshold of my door of my bedroom, and he would look at me and he would stare at me. He, he was just messing with me mildly then, okay? They, they, after they came and they talked to it, whatever they did, I don't know, it made him stronger. He comes back, now he's, he's getting in my body. He's in my body. He gets to where I, I'm subconsciously, I can see everything going on. I can't move though, I cannot move and everything in my eyes starts changing and it changes to like, there's hardwood floors in here. There's old time stuff in here. I don't know what it is, but it, it, when I'm sleeping, he'll touch my face. Very vivid, vivid, gruesome dreams when I do sleep. He touches my face, he gets in my body. When I say he gets in my body, it, when I, he gets inside of me, it's a sensation that like it, it's burning. It's a burning sensation and it just, I can hear him all the time. And when you have the dreams, describe to me like one of the worst. What my dreams are always are, they're very, they're <laughs> dreams that I'm <laughs> people and drinking blood. And then I'll wake up with it like an iron taste in my mouth, like I'm chewing on a penny. Like I was, Demetrius attacked me in here. Uh, I got, the other one broke my jaw on both sides. Like I think, it because I don't know if it itself can, can harm me in that manner, but He's trying to make somebody else do it. He's trying to make everybody around me do something terrible to me. My brother was staying here in that back bedroom. He goes nuts. He start, He just got My other brother came here to stay in Jacob's room. He went crazy and stole my car. Well, I just cleaned the lady's stuff out of the basement that was here that got messed up in here and her boyfriend committed After he tore her ass up in here, she had to go to a home like a hospital. So everybody that comes in this house just goes back crazy. Can you talk about that? Oh my gosh. Everybody that comes in this house, they go, it doesn't allow anybody to get any kind of close like relationship. If you're close to me, you're going nuts. You're going nuts. It, it told like, it tells me you're not, I'm not going to leave this house willingly. I like, I'm not going to go on my own, on my own free will. It's not going to let me. But the creature man now, since they did that, they came here and they talked to it and they did, they did the blessing or whatever, he, it, was, it was okay for three days. On the fourth day, all hell broke loose. Things started flying. The metal cabinet in the basement that was stuck to the wall falls over. Just a metal cabinet, a heavy metal cabinet. All the time, you could, I know when they're coming because I, I can hear them, I can smell them, and I can sense them. The, the creature, and I, and I can't even say it's a man, I can't genderize it, but it's strong, whatever it is. The smell to him is just repugnant. It's just disgusting. It smells like rotting flesh is what it smells like. He has like he has a really round face, beady eyes, long hands. He has a snake, like a tongue like a snake. It splits out like that. That's the creature man. The basement, there's a there's a, a well in the basement that they covered in. There was this is an old miner's house. This house used to be connected to the neighbor's house. There was a mine collapse right here at the end of my alley, a hundred feet from my house where 80, like 81 miners died. And I don't, there, it's just so crazy. I, I, I'm thinking maybe somebody performed some satanic rituals, opened a portal that they had no clue that what they were doing in this house. The, the, the drawings on the basement wall, the demonic drawings, all of that, it's just, it's, it's too much for me. I don't know how, I'm the only one still, I'm the only person in, that lives in this house. Nobody else will live here with me and I can't get out. I've sold everything in this house. I've got rid of everything. 
just to get out. I've had my clothes in the car and got a call. It fell through. Some random old man that I know he had to be, a, he looked like the poltergeist man. He's like the, of that age, came to my door, didn't even know this guy, knocked on my door and he was like, I, somebody came to me in my dream. He keeps coming to me, telling me I gotta pay your rent. I gotta pay your rent. I've never seen a guy before. I never told him, I shut the door in his face. My landlord calls me and is like, well, thanks for the payments, you know, you're three months ahead. It's to the point I haven't left my bedroom in three months. I go from my bedroom to the bathroom. I don't come down here for nothing. I got a brand new washer and dryer downstairs in the basement. I won't do laundry. I'll pay somebody to come do laundry. Because I'm not, I can't do it. I know what's in that basement. I know what's in there. I know that's where he dwells. That's why I have a cross. I never, I'm not a religious person whatsoever. I put a cross in, in these two rooms down here. That way, so if he's, that's a, a portal to the basement or whatever in here so he don't come up the stairs. That don't stop it. The little girl is always, well, she'll run down the steps or she'll run down and she'll go like this with her hand, just like a, like a wave like this. It's creepy. They tell me in my head, like Dave's situation, he's glad Dave's here. He likes to screw with Dave. I don't know why. He said the word is manipulate. When I said that earlier, I said, oh, you want to manip manipulate. Let me, let me ask you this, because when we were when you were sitting over there getting ready to come over, it looked like you were getting very angry or irritated or upset. What was going through your mind and what were you thinking about whenever you were getting upset? What the f*** are they doing here? What is this in my thoughts? Get the f*** out, period. That's what was going on. I'm, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, uh, anger all the time overtakes me. All the time overtakes me. And who is that anger directed toward? Anybody, like any... A, I don't want like nobody in this house but me. It's creepy and every time I leave this house, I have that feeling and I have the urge, get back to the house because it's on fire. And I mean, not just a regular fire, like engulfed in flames shooting 20 feet high. And it's always that feeling, your house is on fire, your house is on fire. And this ain't even my house, I rent this place. I mean, the, rea the reality of it is, it's just, this might be just one crazy ass house that nobody can fix. And you may have to move out of the house. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but every time I do it, something, something happens. Do you think that he is trying to drive people away from you, or do you think he's trying to drive these people to hurt you? What's that? What did you say? I said, do you think that he's trying to drive people away from you, or do you think whatever this is, is trying to drive people to hurt you. Maybe a little of both. Are you all right? You changed there. Like, I'm fine. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. You smell that? He's here. He's in this room. You don't, you smell that. I'm not, listen, he's here. He's in this room with us. He's in this room with us. He's going to show you what you want to see. He's going to show you what he wants you to see. Is he in you or near you now? No, he's here. He's here. It's almost like your eyes and everything's like changed. You get like this death stare. He's here. Yeah, I can hear him. He talks to me. It's just, it's alarming. It's very alarming. It's, it's scary to, I guess, it's not scary to me anymore. It's getting just to the point where it's just annoying. That camera just shut off by itself. Yeah. I looked up and it was off. I turned, mine did, it just turned on. And, Cause I looked up there not even a couple minutes ago and it was on. You see them dots in that camera? Look in the lens, do you see them two lights? Yep. Yeah. Don't look weak eyes. I mean, I feel like this thing wants you, like you said, and it's this close, and it's how you stand up and take your life back and against this, you could be in real trouble. Yeah, I know. But I think it has you in a place where you don't want to do that. It's almost like rewarding you for being alone. But I'm just scared of the power it does possess. I'm not gonna lie, I'm scared of the power it possesses. I rebuke this thing all the time. In the name of Christ, I rebuke you. Get the f out of my house. And just touches me, my face.
I can go on my neck and then all of a sudden I'm sitting up and I can't scream, I can't move, I can't do anything. It happened like the flip of a light switch. Up until this point, the client had been openly discussing her paranormal experiences in an emotional testimonial, but then she zoned out. When I finished my question, she seemed to break from this trance. What's that? What did you say? A quiet calm overcomes her with a stare that burns through us, and now the only time she'll speak is to tell us what the voice she hears is telling her. He wants to play a game. He's going to play a game with you. It just shut off again. Like, like I just told you, he's going to play a game with you. This camera just keeps shutting off. Yeah, but my batteries went way down. I don't understand that. This <laughs> he's going to get you. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. I told you he's going to play a game with you. How dangerous is this house? It's, it's a playground. It's a playground. For what? And we're just the children. We're just the children. He's going to play. He wants to play. It wants to play. She wants to play. Watch. Watch what I tell you. It's funny, actually. Nobody's really safe ever in a house like this. Not at all. And why is it funny? Because we think we can shun it away. It's not going to go anywhere. This is his place. He's not going to go anywhere. He's been here for thousands of years. You'll see. I don't know. There's nothing prayer is going to do to help it. Not at all. Hmm. What do you think? Prayer is not going to work. Hasn't yet. Thousands of years. You hear me? Thousands of years he's been here. It's been. I think I should go to my room now. Why is that? I just feel. I, I think I should go to my room right now. Can we come with you? No, uh, uh, sure. Uh, I don't know. If you want to. Can you carry that microphone with you? Under a fire chair? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. I'm exhausted. Why did you want to come up here? I just needed a rest. Just to catch my breath for a minute. Did he tell you to come up here? Yeah, we should go to my room. We should be in my room. I should be in my room. I should be in here. I'm safe here. I'm safe here. I definitely am. I, I told you, he comes to me. He gets in my body to where I can't move. I can't breathe. The problem is he gave you an order and you listened to it. And I don't think you have any control over the situation. <laughs> you might be right. You might be right. I've done this hundreds of times. So I'm not afraid of him at all. Just wait. I'm ready for it. This interview changed everything. When the client called me, asking us to come back, I knew the activity had intensified, but I had no idea what we were actually walking into. And just when we think we can tear down the equipment and get ready for the investigation, Josh and I hear talking upstairs. Just leave, just go. Just go and leave me alone. I, listen, just stop, please don't. Please don't, no more. I can't think, you're draining my body every time you do this. Every time you do this, you're draining my body. Let me just go. Why can't I just go? Jesus Christ, you're making this hard on me. And you know, what I never, I, what do you want? Let me go, man, just let me go. I told him they can't, I told him they can't. 
They can't get you up. Apparently they can. Nobody's up there with her. No. We're the only two in the house besides her. You gotta stop being mean to me. You have to stop. And we'll talk about this when everybody goes. Okay? We'll just talk when everybody goes. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, how are you? Who's up there with you? Uh, who are you talking to? No, nobody. Just exhausted. Okay. You guys need anything? I'll be right here. Okay, if you need me, yell at me, okay? Okay. In this moment, we have no idea what's being said upstairs. But the client obviously knew the microphone was still on her shirt and was still recording. Let's just assume that this fact had no influence on what she was saying. The sentence that stood out to me was, I told them they can't. They can't get you out. If that's true and she knew we couldn't cleanse the house, then why ask us to come back in the first place? What was the motive for getting us here, inside this house? Did he tell you that he's not going to hurt anybody? I made him promise. What? It's, it's, it's me. Yeah, but why? I don't know. He needs my body. See, that's not, we came here to help you. We're not worried about us at all, you know? Whether he has some purpose for us or not, we're here to help you. That's the whole reason that we came here. And we have a lot of people here that are pulling for you. And we're ready to stand up and fight this thing if you are. Putting that aside, the fight to be free of whatever is haunting her has to start with her. So I recruited a friend to help, someone who has become almost an expert in banishing evil and in spiritual protection. Her name is Kim, but she's asked that her voice and image be withheld from this video. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Hey, I was just giving you a call to, to, ca to catch up with what your plans were and if you were gonna be heading, or really what time you were gonna be heading over here. I was putting my shoes on right now and I was getting ready to call you. Fantastic, we, uh, we just got done. We interviewed her, um, Josh, and. Josh and I sat down and interviewed her, and she is in a bad way. So I was going to see if you could come over here and see if you could help her out a little bit. She's like, I don't know, this thing has a hold of her or something. Yeah, I'm, on, uh, I'm just grabbing, I'm getting some frankincense in there, and uh, I'm getting some supplies because I'm going to give them to her. Is Steve with you? No, he is not. He couldn't make it. Um. Yeah, I've got everything. So get one more thing, and then I'll be on my way. I'll I'll be here whenever you get here, and okay, I'll see you in a little bit. To respect her wish not to be identifiably seen in this video, we'll have to blur her image and disguise her voice. Her role here today is to just speak to the client privately and tell her ways she can fight off this negative energy and protect herself from its influence. She did not come to cleanse the house or perform any sacred rituals to expel any inhuman spirits. She's here to teach the client how she can start claiming her life back. When Kim gets to the house, we discover two things that are very bizarre. First, after waking up this morning, she decided that she was going to go grocery shopping, but on the way, made a wrong turn. And even though she's never been here, when she finally found a place to turn around, she ended up on this street, less than 50 yards from this house. I don't know where my mind was. I was just driving and I ended up pulling in here because I missed my turn and I backed up right at the end of that street and backed the car up and turned around and left and I, I was here like at 8.30 this morning. Yeah, there's, that's definitely strange. Yeah. Secondly, before she left her house, as she was gathering supplies, she realized that she didn't have any lasher petals, a sacred flower that represents St. Michael the Archangel, and apparently, a powerful tool of protection. But in a strange act of fate, a lasher plant is growing right on the front steps of the house. I needed this flower for cleansing and protection to mix it with the kosher salt. As close as it could be to being on the city sidewalk, and it's growing right there in front of the house. Coincidence? Maybe. But everything about this case is stranger than fiction. When we go inside, 
Kim and the client talk for almost an hour, discussing spiritual protection and ways to expel negativity from your body. One of Kim's favorite methods is to sit or stand in a bathtub filled with water, blessed salt, and lasher petals, a way to pull negative energy from your body. So that's exactly what they set out to do. They go upstairs, draw a bath with those ingredients, and let the client test it out before she leaves to go to the hotel. When they go upstairs to the bathtub, I decide to go outside and stand on the side porch. But Dave goes to the second floor to set up a static camera in case anything paranormal happens. When he's setting up the camera, all hell breaks loose. Ryan? Ryan? Yeah. Don't do that. Yes? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Ryan, now. Where are you at? I'm with you. Don't do that! Don't do that! In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Don't you do that! I love you. I'm touching you. I am touching you in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, I compel you to leave her. I compel you to leave her. <laughs> Look at me. 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 According to Kim, when the chaos ensued, she was simply offering the client to touch the mixture that she calls the St. Michael holy water. And as the client got closer to the water, she lashed out physically, swinging her fists at Kim. But when Josh opened the door, she backed into the corner. We were just about to call a nurse who lived locally to assess the client's physical health when she suddenly regained full consciousness and said that she had no memory of anything that just happened. What did we do? Why are we all in the bathroom? Why are we? Well, because you came at me. Oh, my God. Yeah. You came at me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I just need to call Ryan for backup because I didn't, I didn't know what you were physically going to do to me. But it wasn't you. 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 Finally, after a short break, the client sat in the bath of St. Michael holy water willingly as we waited in the hall, while Kim used the water to try and pull the negative energy from the client's body. I can breathe. I can breathe. Oh, my body don't hurt anymore. When it was all over, the client said that she felt much better and that her mood had brightened and that she was ready to go to the hotel room that we had rented for her to sleep. As she was getting ready, she noticed something unexplained scratches on her arms and legs, but she wasn't the only one with unexplained marks that was present at the time of this incident. You can see it's still oozing. Mm -hmm. That's literally the same kind of scratch she had on her legs. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally, we're just sitting here planning out, trying to figure out how we're going to start the investigation, and we look over at Dave's arm and... I mean, it is scabbed over, but that happened, what, like 45 minutes ago? Right, yeah, if it's, if it's clotting up, it'll scab over. It looks like like bleeding, and you didn't. So you felt burning? Yeah, we were just sitting here, and I just felt it burning, and I looked, and it was uh, some, kind of a, some kind of a wound there. I don't know what from. I have no clue. That is strange. No idea. But. Huh. She had similar scratches like that on her. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really safe ever in a house like this. To start off the night, Josh, Rocky, and Sean will get the house to themselves. Dave, Pam, and I leave them alone in the house for over an hour, and they capture intense and intelligent paranormal activity. Holy oh, shit, what is it upstairs? If you want to see what they experienced and captured, follow the link in the description to their episode. But almost 90 minutes later, we return to the house, and it's our turn to see once again what lurks inside. For sure, yeah, I had it set up on there. That's weird. I don't know, I'm out of the view of it right here. Like, I'm not in it, see? I'm not setting it off. Something was setting that off over here. Move around, Pam? I know you weren't moving, but... 
something was just setting off that motion sensor right there. Who's over there? Rolling EVP session. It definitely wasn't me, like, look. Okay, wait, stop. Yeah. Turn back around that way. Are you seeing a shadow right here? No, it's on the floor. I don't know if it's you moving. Yeah, I don't know what the shadow would have been. I bet it was down there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something just moved in here in our equipment room. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on now, you've been begging and begging and begging for Dave to come back. You really want to see Dave. You want to, you want Dave back in this house. Well, Dave's back. I'm back and Pam's back. It's time for you to come out and show yourself. If that was you setting off that motion sensor, can you set something else off in the house to let us know that you're here? I have this orange light in my hand. Can you come up here and talk to this orange light so we can hear your voice? You talked. You got in her head. Why don't you talk to this? If you're so powerful. If you're in charge, if this is your house. You need to come out and tell us what you want with her right now. You guys want to head upstairs? Wait. What is that? I heard like a whining sound. Mm -hmm. Got a head upstairs. Mm -hmm. What is that? All right, let's we're, we're coming up. You can do me a favor. Can I go in between you? Yes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. In front of that motion sensor. Dave scared me. Sorry. You're good. Dude, come here. Something just moved in front of the motion sensor. I heard movement right over here in front of this, and then that went off. Really? Watch how closely Pam walks to the motion sensor without setting it off. And when all of us walk to the stairs, it's quiet. Then, Dave hears a sound at the top of the basement stairs, and to me it sounds like a door latch or handle moving. Can I go in between you? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Can I go in between you? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. And then, when we're all standing completely still. Oh, <laughs> Something just moved in front of that motion sensor. Could this be the entity the client experiences? waiting at the top of the basement stairs until we let our guard down. Don't be waiting until we walk away to try and close that door. And it definitely wasn't us, because as you guys can see from this camera angle over here, I can walk from the stairs, I can walk up the stairs, and not set off that motion sensor. Uh -uh. So that was not Pam or I. We'll leave them to their own devices, I guess. What is that noise? You hear someone talking? Let 
me just put something into perspective very quickly for everyone. We bought those motion sensors six months ago. We've used those motion sensors on so many investigations. They have never gone off. This is the first time those motion sensors have been triggered unexplainably. Yeah. Yep. <gasps> Dude. Speaking of that. That is so weird, man. Thank you for that. You were just talking about it, too. Mm-hmm. Kept telling us before she left, she kept saying that this is all a game to you, that you're here to play a game, that you're here to play the game with the kids and that we're your children. Is this all a game to you? Is this all a game to you? Okay, so you heard Ryan talking about the motion sensor down there and how it never goes off for us and then you made it go off. Literally as he was talking about it. So now I'm asking you, there's four doors up here that are open. Come up and make one of them close. All right, I've got my back to the door here. Can you close the door? Did you hear that voice? I didn't hear a voice. I just heard it sound like something went, no. Really? You know, last time Ryan was standing right here in the same spot and we heard you growl and we picked that up. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. Come on, show yourself a hand like you did. What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. I just got, I feel like I'm about to vomit. Mm -hmm. It's weird because I felt so sick and so drained and so tired right before we started this and now all of a sudden I feel perfectly fine. Yeah. All of a sudden I feel right as rain and you guys are starting to feel weird effects. Ever, right? ever since you said that you didn't feel good down there, that's why I turned away as soon as I hit that living room. I was like, oh man, I don't feel good. Yeah. But that's also, Brian, something you need to keep an eye on. What? If you're feeling too good, you know, and everybody yeah. else isn't. Yes. There it goes again. Dude. Motion sensors going off. What is causing that? Hey, are you guys wait here? I'm gonna go downstairs and see what's causing that. I'm gonna go down there by myself and see what's causing that motion sensor to go off. Can you guys wait up here and we'll see what happens? Okay. I'm coming down. This thing is trying to draw me downstairs by myself. Doing this right now is probably a mistake. We've literally never had those go off. Really? Ever. Ever. Hello? Are you beckoning me down here? She always said she saw a little girl beckoning her downstairs. Are you trying to beckon me down here? I'm down here by myself. Can you shut that door, please? Why don't you move something or make something happen? Slam that door. Shut it. We're here to play your game. 
So let's play your game. Give us answers right now. And show us that you're here. That one. That one's the one that lit up. Thank you. This motion sensor is facing. I'm standing directly behind it. It's facing right at that the top of the stairs here. Do you keep peeking your head around that corner? Is that why that keeps going off? Come on now, make something else go off. Touch one of the red lights upstairs, the one on the bed, or touch this red light right here. All right, then I'm going back upstairs. What that means, I don't know. Come on. Follow him upstairs, let's go. Get upstairs. Never, ever have those gone off. No. And it's the one pointed at the top of the stairs, too, that keeps going off. Kind of like it's trying to continue on its path to come up here, but every time it does, that goes off and it gets stops. scared. Yeah, like stops. Mm -hmm. Wait, you want to try the S-Box here? Yeah. Do an S-Box session? Let's try it. There one again. All right, we're sitting here. I walk this oh, way. Oh, 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 turn it in. That was loud. There it goes again. What the? I don't know. Do you remember they said they heard it loud, babe? Yes. It like shook the floor. All right, we're sitting here. All right, we're sitting here. I don't know. This is weird. There it goes again. Why is it going on? I don't know. There has to be something physically moving in front of it to get that motion sensor to go off. What, you want us to go down to the basement or some Is that what you're trying to draw us? No, wait, just wait. I don't think we should go down yet. Yeah. Is my hey, K2 going off? No. There it goes again. What in the actual... It does not want us up here. It wants us down there. That's why I said I don't think we should get out yet. Well, me and Pam will stay right here. Okay. All right. Here I come again. Hello. And it stopped. Wait for it. I'll give it a few minutes. You really want us in that basement, don't you? Really, really, really want us to go down there. We'll turn that box on again when we go down and see if we can get some answers from you. How about that? Are you wanting just one of us to go to the basement? Come on, five seconds on the clock. If you want it to be just one of us, let's set that motion sensor off again. Huh. 
why the hell do I get myself into this bullshit? I'm gonna step in front of the motion sensor. I'm going to the basement. As I make my way down to the basement, I can't help but think about what the client said earlier today. I know what's in that basement. I know what's in there. I know that's where he dwells. Or what happened last time I was down here alone. Ow, the f was that? Something just ah, poked me right between the shoulder blades. Just as I get downstairs and get set up, Pam and Dave come inside to stand on the first floor and listen for paranormal activity. If you want all of us to get out, make all three of these go off right now. I'm down here, all alone. What did you want? I don't know why it was going off, but. Or did it move down to where he's at now? Or something? Maybe. Pam and Dave make a good point. Because since I came down to the basement, the motion sensor hasn't alarmed once. It's puzzling because it was alarming frequently and on command when we were upstairs. Is that because whatever was setting it off is now in the basement with me? Well, did you say well? The well right here, is this the problem? Is this where the spirits come in? Is this where the creature man, the evil spirit comes in? The creature man, what is his real name? Use this, use this box to talk. What is the creature? Word? That was cold. Cold air right here, right in front of me. Cold air right here, right in front of me. Cold air right here, right in front of me. Let's scoot down this way just a little bit. Just so that action camera can get this. Can you tell me my name? I'm feeling something all around right here. What was your plan to do with What were you going to do to her? Why don't you knock that cross right off the wall over there? It's only once the footage from my camera and the cameras upstairs were synced that I realized the relevancy of this voice. And for the first time since we started this session, the motion sensor at the top of the basement stairs alarms, startling Dave and Pam. No, you're good. Then, through the spirit box, a voice says, Scared you. Who's touching my face right now? Was the client right? Is this just a game to this entity? I told you he's gonna play a game with you. How dangerous is this house? It's, it's a playground. As it gets later, 
we need to get Josh, Rocky, and Sean back inside the house to investigate together. I mean, you, if you just look at everything that we've had today, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I wasn't standing close enough to set that off. The house had turned over nothing, and the house turned on. Where's the rim pod? Still on the bed where you guys left it. You walk back over to the device. You've got us all in here now. Do you hear that? Yeah. Hmm. What'd you hear? It's like a male voice. You walk back over to the device. You've got us all in here now. Do you hear that? Yeah. Hmm. What'd you hear? It's like a male voice. Pam, I want to put it. Are you touching that again? If you're touching that, can you get closer to it? Yeah, occasionally you'll get like a piece of equipment that goes off during the investigation. But literally this house has set off every piece of equipment we've brought into this house. Yeah. It's like, it's like alternating. Can you do the one upstairs? Let me walk over by the stairs. Why does it keep alternating like that? It's just like going from piece of equipment to piece of equipment. And what did she say before she left? Remember during the interview? Mm -hmm. She said, this thing is gonna play with you tonight. Mm -hmm. Which is creepy. We got an alarm up in her bedroom. Can you set that off for me? Sound like something said no. We heard that earlier. Did you? Mm -hmm. Can you set that off for me? Sound like something said no. Are you in this room with us? We're not hiding, so why are you hiding? Who's in the basement? You gonna come up and talk to us? Do you want us to go down to the basement? Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Whoa. And that went off at the same. Holy oh, shit. dude, that was so loud. That was right in here again. Here we go. It's going off again. Because I'm recording you. Are you back here? Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Whoa! And that went off at the same. Holy. Oh, shit. Dude, that was so f***ing loud. That was right in here again. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> well, you should have seen what I did earlier. I wrapped myself around his leg and I cried his arm. I cried his f***ing arm. <laughs> what was that? Running? I don't know, that was loud. You guys have to get used to Sean pushing you in the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I cried his f***ing arm. I was like, hey, get the f*** right here. I mean, to me, it sounds like it's like trying to f***ing go through a damn door. But it was like that, that, but earlier, it was the whole f house that shit. But you gotta think too, when this thing does stuff, what do people normally do? Run. They get the hell out of the house. We haven't left. Yeah. All right, told us about three o'clock in the morning that whoever or whatever you are, that you come to life, and that you cause her a great deal of turmoil, but now you've gone quiet, and you're not setting any of this stuff off like you were a few minutes ago. So where did you go? We could hear you making knocking sounds. 
We could hear you walking around. But now that we're calling you out, you're awful quiet. Or would you like us to go ahead and start trying to cleanse the house of you? Do you want that? I mean, to me, the silence validates everything we've experienced up to that point, you know? Josh is right. After everything we've experienced tonight, it's obvious that this house still has a lot of paranormal activity. Oh, Something just moved in front of that motion sensor. All right, we're sitting here. Hallway, right here, right in front of me. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. And it's clear the client believes that it's an entity or evil force that's ruining her life. But the question is, are we capable of cleansing this house? Josh reaches out to a friend that he trusts for advice, and they tell him, What's needed to rid this house of the demonic infestation is not something that we're ready for or capable of doing. Okay. If this was just like a normal haunting, I would have no problem just doing the cleansing. But this is like a normal haunting. Like she said, we could be putting all three, all of us in danger. We could be putting her in danger. I don't know. What do you guys, I'll do whatever you guys want, but. Considering we had no idea what we were stepping into when we arrived at this house today, we don't want to attempt something that could make things worse for the client when she returns. But as we pack up our equipment to leave, I'm committed to returning as soon as possible with the right people who can do this correctly. And when I wake up a few hours later, I make a plan to go back to the house the next day with the proper tools and people who have experience expelling demonic forces. And then I have to sit back and watch that plan blow up in my face. From the moment I opened my eyes on the day when we were finally going to cleanse the house, it was a failure. Accusations over text and threats of legal action and exploitation from the client. She said she wanted nothing to do with us anymore. And that was it. It was over. Everyone lost. Everyone except that house. It really does seem like after all is said and done that maybe she really didn't want the help or maybe something was telling her not to accept the help. Um, you know, because we were nice enough to get her a hotel room and, um, you know, put her, put her up for the night by herself and so she could kind of relax and not have to worry about that place. And then, you know, I was checking our credit card statements and I saw where we had a $250 charge. I went to try and figure out what that was all about. So I called the general manager at, at that specific hotel and he told me that she came in with other people smoking in the lobby and wanting to party, asking the general manager if uh, he wanted to party or knew anywhere to party and smoked in the room and cost us $250. So it's it's as if she didn't uh, take it seriously. Yeah, and you guys, you know, I, this was my first time meeting her. So, you know, I'm pretty sure she's probably a good person. I don't know her personally. And maybe it's just this house has just got her so messed up that she's incapable of thinking straight or making the right decisions or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and in the end, it's like, you know, like you said, chalk it up to a learning experience. Whatever happened that night happened that night, and we can look back on the evidence and say that we that we tried our best to help this woman. Yeah, and that's what, you know, I've always said is, you know, with each investigation, you gain knowledge and wisdom, you know, whether you win the battle or you lose it. And I kind of regret not doing the cleansing that night, but I don't think just like a normal house cleansing was good enough. Mm -hmm. I think you would have to bring people in that specialize in, you know, doing exorcisms and stuff like that. So it was just a conflict of making the situation worse or letting somebody that's better, better capable of dealing with that situation come in and handle it. Yeah. And ultimately she decided to decline the help. So there's not much we can do. We wish her the best and we hope she finds out how she can change her life to make things better. And and we hope that, you know, one day she finds the peace that she deserves in her life, but. It's tough walking away from cases, but there's just, 
that was the time you need to walk away from the case just for your own sanity and your own safety. You know, I think we did all that we could do. I know you guys did all that you could do. Whatever demonic presence was inside that house. I'm sure down the road we'll face it again. Thank you.